if you've ever, ever wondered what bad capacitors look like on the motherboard or what to look for, here we've got, this is an old AMD socket 462 motherboard. It is a MSI, and normally MSI is decent, um, but a lot of them run into problems with bad capacitors. If you can see, that one is leaking. Yep, stuff on top shouldn't be there. This one is bulging at the top, and then get this one out of the way. These two are bulging. I wish I could get a side view of it where you can really see the how they're bulging, but really can't tell here on the camera but you want to the top should be completely flat and these are not these are bulging and this is a telltale sign and you've got stuff leaking out the top it's got brown junk at the top so this one's got four bad capacitors this is a machine that came in for me to work on it was blue screening on boot up which was actually unrelated to the bad capacitors. It actually seems to be running fine with the bad capacitors, but I'm not going to send it back with bad capacitors. There was a corruption on the um, partition, cleaned it up, and now it's running fine. But this is a this is a kind of a unique box for this client. It runs a security software that verifies ID badges. They've got another machine that um, they create the ID badges on. This talks to it and verifies ID badges. They've got um, card swipes on doors. So when they swipe a card, it runs through here, checks the ID, and then unlocks the door. So really don't want to rebuild this machine, so I was glad that I was able to recreate, I mean, fix the corruption on the hard drive, went ahead and made a ghost image of it in case it ever does die. Um, we can, you know, move the image over to another hard drive and get it back up and running quick. But normally, for something like this, I would probably go ahead and just replace the capacitors. But I've got probably five or six AMD socket 462 motherboards just sitting that uh, I will probably never use so I'll probably just pick one of them stick in here and I may have to do a repair install it's running Windows 2000 you know if it won't boot but I may have something close enough this one's got a VIA chipset so I'll look and see if I've got a socket 462 motherboard with a VIA chipset that I can stick in here and Hopefully it'll boot, and I'll probably end up junking this motherboard. Normally, I would keep it, and I would eventually get around to replacing the capacitors, but this is not that great of a motherboard. It's um, SDRAM, it's not DDR. So, this is an older 462 motherboard, so CPU support on it's probably not that great. So... I've got other ones, so we won't hold on to it. We'll just throw it away. Well, it's up and running on the new board. No luck as far as getting it to boot. It froze, so we're going to do a repair install. This board has a different chipset, so I didn't have anything with the same chipset. I had a couple boards that had VIA chipsets just like the original but they were different model vias so I figured it would probably still not boot 
so this is the board that I wanted to use, so I just went ahead and used it. I don't think it has a VHF set. But. Doesn't really matter. Repair installs quick and it won't mess with anything. So we'll go through repair install. My office is a mess, but alright. Now, this is 2000, but XP is basically the same. So, you don't want to press R yet. I know it says repair, but this is not where you want to go. So you press enter, you do F8, and now it's asking if you want to repair. So at this screen, we do an R for repair. And it's going to go through this and it'll run through the repair. This will leave all the data intact. Most of your programs will still work. So, if you ever change up any hardware on your machine and it blue screens or it freezes and it won't boot, you can do a repair install and you won't lose your data, you won't lose your programs, and you'll be back up and running. So, this machine's not the fastest, so it's going to take a while. So we're going to leave it.